I mean, it's, they don't. People keep asking me that, but they, I mean, it's like, it's like comparing making uh, a cup of tea to baking bread. So, well, they both take place in the kitchen. After that, there really aren't any similarities. I mean, I heat up water and I pour it on some tea and I steep it and so forth. And you know, the other one, it's just they're very, very different. They're not the same. A song happens very quickly, uh, and uh, you know, and follows, and also exists in a, in a for me. In a, in a much more uh, knowable, formal environment. Right? Whereas the novel is very, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want a song also, but I don't want to do whatever I want. I want to write formal songs that go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. That's what I do. Whereas the novel, you know, the novel is almost infinitely open. Uh, it's told backwards and it traces back to a catastrophic event in a man's life. Uh, and uh, that, that happened when he was a teenager. He is an interactive game designer who is disfigured. Uh, and two of the people who play the game that he administers through the mail come to harm. And uh, it's called Trace Italian, um, and which is a type of medieval fortification. And, um, and it's, uh, it takes place in post-apocalyptic America after there's been a meltdown on a nuclear reactor out uh, by Fontana and Riverside out there. And everybody's seeking shelter. Everybody wants to get to this underground fortress that has been built in Kansas. So that's the plot of this. And you start your game in California, and you uh, and you attempt to move toward Kansas. And every move you get is a little narrative piece that you choose from four uh, options, and uh, and each one moves you a little further forward. But no one will ever get to the end. Conan the Barbarian has no parents, as far as I know. Bless you. But in my mind, he was my model, trying to stand strong and brave, sword in hand, black hair flowing. In truth, I have very little hair on my head now, and the hair I do have tends to clump in stringy clusters. But if my eyes are closed and my concentration is strong, I can form a different picture of myself in my mind. So this was what I did, standing by the waist-high deck where the phone was. I closed my eyes and I concentrated. Dad was getting ready to tell me about his, grand, about his mother's funeral plans, I knew. I could make it easier for him if I tried hard enough. It isn't really much of a mystery, this occasional need I have to comfort my father. I did something terrible to his son once. Grandma lived a long time, I said. Sean, I don't like to say this. I know you loved your grandmother, and she loved you. But we... Pausing here. Some things you practice a few times, but it doesn't make them any easier. I could hear it now. We don't think you should come to the funeral. I know that that's... He just left it there for a second. I, I mean, part of what the book is about is, is uh, questioning the idea of causation for what people do. People just follow little threads, you know. I don't know that when people do something rash and horrible, that there's a, a distinct why you can point to. Say, oh, here's where they went, here's where they went off the rails. I don't know that there's really ever such a moment if you look hard enough and look close enough at stuff. But he does follow a thread into some spaces that he doesn't feel like he can turn around from, right? But it's not, and I don't think, you know, I want to be careful not to be saying, what he should have done is imagine less. That's not true, right? Uh, obviously that's not true. Uh, the imagination nurtures and heals us. Um, you can't say anything qualitatively about the imagination being a great and nurturing place or a dangerous and terrible place. It's all that stuff. It's sort of like the freeway. You drive down the freeway to get someplace, you can also walk out in the middle of it and get hit and die. Right? So, and, uh, you know, it, it, it almost is, it has no absolute characteristic. If you start wanting to visit dark pockets of your imagination that may or may not change you as a person, you know, you can't really say what happens to you if you explore, you know, let's say you wanted to ask, it's hard to say, like if you read a novel that's, that's from the first person perspective of a murderer, right, it might have an effect on you, you know, you know it's not going to turn you into a murderer, nothing can do that, you're responsible for your actions, but it might have some effect on the way you think of things, you know, there's a sense in which you want to be a steward of what you let in, you know, I think. Well, other people will think, no, open up the floodgates, but I don't think that's, I think one should be a little, a little cautious. Just, just like if you watch a bunch of terrible television for three days, you're going to feel kind of less intelligent than you did a few days before, right? And, uh, 
Uh, but he's talking about the about curiosity, about you know that if you pass this house and it looks like there's something in there, if you go in, something's going to happen to you, and a smart player might say, I don't I don't need what's in there. But Sean can't understand that, right? To him, those aren't my people, the ones who wouldn't look, right? even if they know it might be dangerous. When anger rears up in me, I have a trick I do, where I picture it as a freshly uncoiled snake dropping down from the jungle canopy and hitting for my neck. If I look at it directly, it will disappear, but I have to do it while the snake's still dropping, or it will strike. This sounds like something they teach you in therapy or at the hospital, but it's not. It's just a trick I found somewhere by myself. Once you've looked at a deadly thing and seen it disappear, what more is there to do? Walk on through the empty jungle toward the city, past the clearing. It's okay, Dad, I said evenly. I took stock of how I really felt, found all the various threads, saw which way they all ran. Dad, it's, it's okay, I get it. It's all right. And I do get it. I am not a welcome presence at a funeral, no matter whose it is. If I let myself say, stay mad about that, I will go insane. On the other end, my father, now an orphan, was crying. Thank you, Sean, he said. I don't mean to be awful to you. It's just, it's hard for me to ask. It's really hard. Your grandmother was so happy back in those early days, back when the little silence that followed wasn't my dad's repetitive stutter. I could hear him entering a space he usually tried to avoid, finding himself on the other side of a door he wouldn't normally open. I followed him in. When you were a baby, he said at last. He sounded like he was choking. It's okay, Dad, I said. It'll be okay. Clan Scarecrow I saw penned in neat script on a little card inside my head.